welcome to Transformation Church. Let's pray. Father, we come before you in the name of Jesus. And Lord, we just thank you for the gift of your son. We thank you for what you're doing in our lives. We thank you for the body of Christ, the church, Lord, that you gave your life for, for this world, but for a bride that you're making fit, that you're making ready, Lord, that you're preparing, Lord. And I thank you that you're making us without spot or wrinkle or blemish. Lord, I just thank you for the gifts in our lives, Lord. I thank you for um, apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers, especially our pastors. Lord, I thank you for ministry gifts, Lord, that you've given grace gifts that you've given to encourage, to strengthen, to build up, to equip your body, to do the works of service, to yield their lives to you, to see you glorified in this world. And I just ask for your blessing on our on our pastors and our leaders, Lord, and I just thank you for them. I ask that you would encourage and uh, strengthen them and that you would glorify your name. Lord, I thank you for those that are true leaders, that just like Aaron's rod that budded, Lord, that you will cause fresh anointing and fresh grace to be theirs and that you will supernaturally equip and provide that you will that you will mandate lord that you will mandate um the blessing that you will mandate you're commanding the blessing lord and that uh, that it will be clear to this world lord that the delineation is even sharper, even clearer, even more in focus, Lord, that those that are yours, Lord, that you are backing up, that you are uh, anointing afresh, that you are blessing, that you are equipping, that you are uh, manifesting your grace, your power, your miracles, your fruit, so that the world will see they are yours and that the world would know who's, who's really on the Lord's side. And Lord, we thank you for that today. I ask that every need be met. Lord, we ask that you would extend your kingdom, extend your gospel, forward your kingdom in the hearts and lives and minds of those that are watching. Lord, that we would all be transformed, be born like Jesus. And we ask it in Jesus' name. We thank you for it. Help us to worship you now in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Woohoo! I was telling everybody all oh, morning, I, and that's happening again. So I hope everybody, Lord, I want everyone to sense what I'm sensing in the spirit, that your presence and your whooshing. <laughs> Thank you. Praise is rising. Eyes are turning to you. We turn to you. Oh, 
strength to face the day. And in your presence all our fears are washed away. Oh 
cares for you. He's already taken care of it, by the way. I just heard the Holy Spirit say, on top of that, the provision's already there. You just haven't gotten in the right timing yet, but the time will be there that you're going to see it. Some of you actually today, some of you within an hour, but the provision's already there. Just cast that care. It's not yours to carry. I've already prepared for you a place. I've already prepared the provision. It's already there. It's in your future, and it's soon to come. In other words, you're worrying about nothing. In Christ alone, I place my trust. <laughs> Find my glory in the power of the cross. Every victory, let it be said of me that my source of strength, my source of hope is Christ. Yeah. 
Jesus' name. 
Lord, that what the enemy meant for harm will turn into a third great awakening in this nation. That we would see the greatest harvest that we've ever seen in history. That this would become a worldwide move of your Holy Spirit. That it wouldn't be centered just in one spot, but that it would spread like wildfire across the whole globe. In the name of Jesus, let your presence invade this planet. Let your manifest presence invade this planet. Just like you came at the Hebrides Revival. Come and let your presence flood this planet. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. We open the door. We loose your presence on this planet. We lose the angel armies yes. on this planet to bring forth the kingdom, to establish the kingdom, and to bring forth the reign of the Lord, the Almighty One, the Everlasting One, the One True God. We worship you this morning, Lord. We invite your presence, not just here in this room, but here on this planet. Lord, your word declares you, you looked for one person to stand in the gap for a nation. So there's four of us here, Lord, this morning standing in the gap for this planet. We invite you to come. We stand in the gap. We yield our lives to you afresh and anew. We say use us to be an instrument of spreading your glory and your presence on this planet. Father, as we move forward, we ask your presence continue to grow in us, that, that you prepare our hearts to receive what your word is for us this morning, that we will leave this place different than, than when we came, that something in eternity changes this morning as a result of us gathering in your presence, looking into your word. Let the anointing that rests upon your word be released in this place and over the internet today in Jesus' name. And let it be captured upon, digitally captured, that anyone that ever watches this in the future, that your presence would be captured upon us and released into their lives. We thank you for it in advance. In Jesus' name. I'm seeing the spirit realm and I see an angel and the Lord's reminding me that we have at least two, each one of us do, that the angel armory is with us all the time. And we need to spend more time recognizing that and putting our angels to work. He also said to me, I know that November 11th is actual um, Veterans Day, but God said, don't wait for that. And then for those of you that see this later, and if you can give this to somebody by Veterans Day, that there is a blessing he's placing upon those, in fact, especially Vietnam veterans. Um, I heard the word Mark and Melissa, and I, and in the calf area, um, I'm sensing in the left calf of your, there was an injury, that, so you know that this is you, and God said, I love you, I forgive you, I have outstretched hands towards you, receive me, receive the gift of salvation, so that when you die, you're going to heaven, receive my healing upon your leg, upon your emotions, I, and I, uh, I'm captivating your heart right now. Even as you hear these words, your heart's being captivated. So, uh, Father, right now, I pray a blessing upon the Vietnam veterans. I also, upon the Afghan, Afghanis, Lord, that have, and the Americans that are left over there, Father, that this whole thing. Father, any veteran, no matter what war they stood up in, and no matter what part of the, the military they're in, we don't have to wait till the 11th of November. We just speak a blessing upon them and their families and their lives today. We speak restoration from um, injuries, mental uh, PTSD. Is that what it's called, Father? We just say, PTSD, you have to bow to the name of Jesus. We speak life and life more abundantly. And I command the ministry of angels to go forth to you and minister to you even now. I command the blinders to come off of your eyes. 
I command the stoppers to come out your ears. I command your heart to become pliable so that you can receive freedom from fear and trauma and all kinds of things that have happened. Father, I thank you, Lord, that you're bestowing honor upon them in Jesus' name. Where there's been dishonor, they're going to receive honor in Jesus' name. Father, we even pray right now for the military that's active, the active military here and abroad and their families. Father, we speak a blessing upon them, them and their families in Jesus' name. Father, that for those that don't want to get the jab, Father, that your protection and they'll, they'll be just, that they, they will be blessed in Jesus' name, that they'll be able to do what they feel in their heart to do in Jesus' name. Bless our military, Father. Bless our first responders, Father. Thank you. And again, Mark and Melissa, I don't, those are the two names that came to me. Um, but if your name's not Mark and your name's not Melissa, it really doesn't matter. God loves you and he has a plan. I think Pastor Gary has a word, but I want to do one more thing. Since I already heard the Holy Spirit say some of you aren't even saved. What does save mean? It means that when you die, you're going to go to heaven. You're going to die someday. You're going to leave your body and you're going to go into eternity. Now, where you spend eternity is the question. There is either hell or heaven. Those are the only two choices. And the good news is, there's so much good news about this, is you do not have to be good. You can't be good enough. You can't do enough good things. You cannot do enough bad things to not receive salvation if you choose Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. So it's a free gift. Free gift. That means he, he just offers it. So whether you do when someone hands you a gift, you receive it and you take it. So I'm going to invite you to pray this prayer with me right now and repeat these words. Say, Heavenly Father. I come to you in the name of Jesus Christ. I admit I'm a sinner. I ask you to forgive me. I believe Jesus Christ died on the cross for me. That he was buried. He rose from the dead on the third day. And he's sitting in heaven with you, Father. He's actually praying for me. Okay. So I receive your forgiveness. I receive your forgiveness. I receive Jesus as my Lord and Savior. I receive Jesus as my Lord and Savior. Take my life. Take my life. And do something wonderful with it. Do something wonderful. I receive healing for my emotions. I receive healing for my emotions. I receive healing for my body. I receive healing for my body. I receive healing for my finances. I receive healing for my finances. And I just receive healing for my spirit, man. <laughs> and I admit. I when, I die, when I die, I'm going to heaven. Going to heaven. Amen. Amen. So, Father, right now I pray a blessing upon everyone who prayed that prayer. I pray that you would fill them with the Holy Ghost and fire, that they would get the, the that they would speak in tongues as the um, Spirit gives them utterance. Father, that they would receive everything that you have for them in Jesus' name. Amen. And I just want to say this. If you don't have a church home, transformationchurch.com.com in Central Florida, we want you to come. And if you need, you live somewhere else and you're not in Central Florida, contact us and t say, hey, I prayed that prayer. Do you know a church in my area? Because you know what? God really dealt with me last night. And I know he's waiting, but he really dealt with me last night and said it's time for nominal church to be over with in every shape or form. And if you're not going to a church that's spirit-filled, that's flowing with the Holy Ghost, if you're going to a church that's going along with the agenda of the world, get out! I hear That's the Holy Spirit, not me. Get out! It's, it's not time to play around. You need to get where the Holy Ghost and fire is taking place. It's a, it, where the presence of God, it permeates the place. Because if you ever needed that, you need it now. In Jesus' name. I didn't see how it fit until Pastor Becky shared her part. But... Um, during worship, I had a picture of, I saw Jesus as he was carrying the cross. And as he was walking through the streets on his way to be on the cross. And what I was seeing was the rejection, the words that were being spoken against him. And you need to know that Jesus faced the rejection. All those words that were spoken, he took the rejection so you wouldn't have to. And some of you, you've had words spoken against you. You've faced rejection and you've taken it on yourself. But God wants you to know that you can come to him. He will take that. He took it for you because he loves you. He took it for you. 
He was beaten for you. He was bruised for you. But he took, there's somebody who needs to know, he took specifically, he took the words of rejection that were spoken. That's for you. And the word, the other part I have is come to me. I have carried the cross. I carried your shame to the cross. I carried your pain, your rejection. I carried it all so you might receive my blessing. I bore the cross and the curse for you to obtain to receive my blessing. My blessing makes rich and adds no sorrow to it. My blessing allows you to enter into my presence. Lord, we just thank you right now for your blessing. Lord, and I speak against the words that have been, uh, the curses that have been spoken yes. against those that are uh, watching. And even in this room, Lord, we break those curses Amen. right now in the name of Jesus. We take authority over those words. We call them null and void. They have no power. And we speak in turn blessing in the name of Jesus, the blessing of the Lord. We thank you for it in Jesus' name. We receive your blessing. Thank you for your presence in Jesus' name. So now we're going to do the offering. And, um, yeah. and you can go online and you can give. God loves a cheerful giver. Not a reluctant giver. A cheerful giver. One that looks forward to giving. And if that's you, that's great. If that's not you, say, oh me, Lord, change my heart. If you've encountered Jesus, you can't help but give. Because God changes you. I remember when I first learned about giving, I was at an Olive Garden, and um, I was there with one of my pastors, and I just happened to read. We had envelopes back then. Actually, we had one. And, <clears throat> but it talked about bring the tithe into the storehouse. And I was like, what's a tithe? Because I didn't know. And they said, oh, a tithe is a tenth. It's, it, that's literally what it means, is one-tenth. So one-tenth of what you earn is God's. And you have the privilege and the honor of giving that into his kingdom. You can give more. I asked. I said, can you give more? And they're like, yeah. <laughs> but that's like the... And for those who might think, well, that's a law. That's a legalistic thing. Abraham gave tithes before the law. Isaac, Jacob, they gave. It's not a legal thing. It's a love thing. It's a faith thing. It's a relationship. And so God asks if you do that, that there's a, a blessing that comes on you and on your finances. You know, he's not asking. He could have said, you give me 90%, I'll let you live on 10%. But he didn't do that. And if you give that part, then he gives back. He rebukes the devourer off your life. Off your life. <laughs> So if you would like to, if you're ready to give, then if you would, um, online you can... Or snail mail. Thank you. You can click on the contact up there and it talks about giving. There's also, um, if you want to mail a check, if you still have envelopes and stamps, <laughs> um, you can mail it to P.O. Box 162701. Altamont Springs, Florida, that's A-L-T-A-M-O-N-T-E, Springs, Florida, 32716. And uh, I just want to encourage you to give today. No one's forcing you. We're not, you know, it's between you and God. But God wants to bless you. He wants to get things to you. And he said things like, give and it shall be given unto you. That's the kingdom of heaven. That's how God's laws operate. He set things in motion. When you give, you receive more back. It's, Jesus said it's more blessed to give than it is to receive. 
I know you like receiving, but it's even better when you get to give. Just try it. You'll like it. You will like it. God is good, and He loves you. He's trying to bless you. And, you know, for those who say, oh, you're people of ministry, you're just trying to get our money. Well, you know what? That's not true. God is trying to get you to give your money because he's trying to get something to you and he wrote the book. I didn't. We didn't. We didn't we didn't put that down. We didn't it's not something we made up. It's what Jesus said. So if you are a Christ follower, if you believe he is who he said he is, then you'll do what he said. Jesus said one time he goes, "If you know these things, happy are you if you do them." So I'm just trying to encourage you to obey God. The rest is up to you. But I encourage you today, do it. So right now we're going to um, read a, a uh, tithe, and offering tithe and offering declaration. Thank you. <laughs> and we're doing this because what you say, things happen. God calls those things that are not as though they are. Romans, book of Romans tells us that. If we will uh, line up with God, speak what he's saying, we want to see God results. You haven't tried it before this, and, and look what you have. So try doing it God's way. I, I'm just saying, okay? So let's say this together. And say it in faith. Ask God, while you're saying this, believe God to do this. You are literally, your mouth is the rudder for your life, and you are changing dec your declaration, your direction, and you'll see the outcome. I've seen it in my own life. I'm not just talking some weird thing to do. I'm saying, just speak. All right. Lord help me. Here we go. Because I am a tither and a giver, the windows of heaven are open to me, and God rebukes the devourer for my sake. I am blessed financially, and I receive a blessing that I cannot contain. I don't worry about lack, knowing God supplies all my needs richly and abundantly. Therefore, I am able to sow freely and liberally. And I choose to sow cheerfully, generously, and bountifully, knowing I will reap bountifully. I have in abundance every favor and heavenly and earthly blessing. All my needs are met, and I abound in every good work. Because I obey him, the Lord blesses everything I put my hand to. He grants me abundant prosperity. He makes me the head and not the tail, above and not beneath. The blessings of God are chasing me and overtaking me. Because God loves to see me prosper, I am believing him for jobs and better jobs, advancements, raises and bonuses, sales and commissions, God ideas and strategies, debts paid off, expenses decrease, blessings and increases, financial freedom and breakthroughs, and houses and lands. And that's just the beginning. Believe for more. Believe for souls, too. Because that's the whole purpose of God's blessing on your life. He does meet your needs over and abundant. But he gives you an abundant life so you can be a blessing and so you can help get the gospel out. Because it costs money to get the gospel out. If you live on the planet, it costs money to do things. You don't want to talk to you. And I want to say something about this ministry. Um, because some of you, you might be thinking, well, they're just trying to get money or whatever. That's not the truth. And I know of someone where they've been counseled to not give so much. That this person was giving away their bread and not seed. And there is a difference. You know, there are some things where you need to take care of you, Christian. And God's not going to give you more until you learn to discern and do what's right. Yeah, you need to help. You need to give. But you should also take care of you too. And I'm not talking about being selfish. I'm not talking about hoarding. I'm not talking about being uncaring. Or, you know, if that's you, repent. 
repent and give, repent and do what you're supposed to do. But for some, they have a crazy idea and they, they try and over and extend what God's trying to do and they haven't learned balance. And so they're suffering for it. And they, that needlessly, God does not want you in lack. And he gives you enough where you can give to others and will easily meet your needs. He's a good God and a good father. He's faithful. He's not demanding of you. He's asking, but he loves you. Woohoo! Hope he took some notes. I'm talking about um, increasing, an increase of the anointing. So, Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus. We thank you for the opportunity to gather together. Father, I pray that you'll cause my tongue to be the pen of the ready writer, that I will speak as an oracle of God. Father, I pray that the same anointing and presence of God that's here in this room will permeate the airways, will go to everyone listening, and, and Father, that will um, carry throughout our, the rest of our lives, Father, that we'll learn to walk in lockstep with the Holy Spirit, being in that presence continuously, being, be being filled with the Holy Spirit at all times. In Jesus' name, I also ask that the blinders come off of our ears, the stoppers come out, I mean, blinders off of our eyes, the stoppers out of our ears and our hearts to become pliable. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Okay, I am going to do something I don't normally do. I heard, uh, follow the, the line, chain, chain of command here, but Jojo Dawson puts a thing on YouTube, that, and he put a thing that Dutch Sheets, who is a prophet, and he does a lot of dreams and stuff, honestly, I didn't know my copyright laws, so I sat down and typed because it's a portion. It he Jojo posted it on Saturday, I believe. So I don't know when this message was given because it's a portion of a message that Dutch Sheets gave, but it pierced my heart, and I knew I was supposed to share it. So I am going to read. So I apologize if it you know seems belabored, but um, I I know it's a word for us as as a body, our and anyone that's listening. But I know it's for Transformation Church very strongly so he, it was a clip and I, yeah I wrote down 10 30 21 so that would have been yesterday I, and this is what Dutch said we've moved into a new release of the prop the prophetic anointing I believe every I know everybody here and everyone here has a prophetic anointing you know what you can prophesy it doesn't necessarily make you a prophet but the prophetic anointing can come upon us at any time that God needs us. I think the most important gift of the Holy Spirit to have, and one of them is prophecy, is the one that you need at the time. If somebody's laying in a ditch, bleeding to death, you don't need the word of knowledge to go, uh, I perceive that thou art dying. Um, no, and we know, and we laugh, but the truth is a lot of people don't realize that you need to know what to do and how to minister. Or make, In that case, I would hope that you would get the gift of miracles and laying on hands and, and, and speak life and cause the bleeding to stop or whatever. Cause the, the dead to rise. So, But we need to know. So we've moved into a new release of the prophetic anointing and flow. And part of that is dreaming, visions. Prophecy will go to another level. Words of knowledge will go to a new level accompanied by signs and wonders. I take that, don't you? And miracles. Gift of faith. We are about to see some of these in things engage again in a fresh way. Say a fresh way. A fresh way. I don't care if you've operated in them this morning. It's a fresh way that's going to come. And I believe it's like manna. It's fresh. It's new every morning. The greatest is faithfulness. Amen? Amen. So in a fresh way. In a higher level than we've ever seen before. God is working behind the scenes right now to do things that are preparing the body of Christ for what he wants to do. We forget about that. Again, I didn't know I was going to make so many comments, but... I hear the Holy Spirit saying to, we forget that God knows the end from the beginning. He knows exactly what you're going to say, what you're going to do, what you're not going to say, what you're not going to do. And he has made provision already. And many times, <coughs> I, the Holy Spirit said several times today to me, we miss our provision because we're not even looking for it. And we're not paying attention. So start paying attention. We are about to see some of these things engage in a fresh way, in a higher level than we've ever seen before. God is working behind the scenes right now to do things that are preparing the body of Christ. I'm the body of Christ. You're the body of Christ. If you're born again, you're the body of Christ. To prepare the body of Christ for what he wants to do. He is working on us. And he, <laughs> I like that part. I'm glad he's still working on me. Who's saying that? To make me what? I, the Gaithers? 
Yeah. Wanted to be. Oh, it was one of those. Yeah, the, the tape we had when the kids were young. Oh, we. Anyway, it's a good song. He's still working on me. Praise God, he's still working on me until the day I take my last breath. And I have a feeling he'll still be working on us in heaven in a good way. It's all good. He's still working on us. He's probably doing more to us right now than through us. And I don't mean to us in a negative sense. I mean within us, prepare to prepare us. Preparation's important. Amen. That's yes. very important. Because he has to have a people who are ready for what he wants to do. It's not what we want to do. It's what he wants to do. He does it through us, right? Amen. Amen. Yeah. So he is working tremendously, and some of us won't know fully what he's been doing until we begin to move into the quote-unquote fruit of it, he said. But that's okay. We just trust that he is working, and he said amen. And he is working, he is working in wonderful ways. So then he, he had him turn to Acts chapter 2, and we're going to go Acts chapter 2, verses 1, and I've got the Amplified Classic Edition here, Acts chapter 2, verse 1. And when the day of Pentecost is fully come, they were assembled together in one place, when suddenly, I love suddenlies, there came a sound from heaven, like a rushing of a violent tempest blast, and it filled the whole house in which they were sitting. Now he went into what the actual word wind meant there, and I've always heard hurricanes, hurricane force winds, I, get, I don't know, because we live in Florida, he said tornado, um, either one, he said the tornado passed everything else and just landed on that building, but didn't destroy it. It was that kind of wind that came. And he said, is the Holy Spirit breathing again the breath of life into his people? Now pay attention, because that's probably why I'm feeling such a presence of God today. Because I've, I've heard this a couple times. It's the restoration of what, of what was lost in Genesis 1. This form of the word is only used twice in the whole New Testament, both times by... Luke, the physician. Luke was an actual doctor, a physician. He wasn't just he didn't just have his quote unquote doctorate. He was a physician, and so he would see. If you read the book of Luke, he sees things differently. Like, um, for instance, somebody was just talking about it this week. How that when somebody else said, "Well, Peter's mother-in-law had a fever," he, Luke said she he she had a very terrible fever. I mean, he would go into more detail because he observed as a doctor, you know, your perspective of what he saw. So he's the physician, and, and he wrote the book of Luke, of course, and then he also wrote the book of Acts. The, all right, the word is used as the, quote, unquote, the breath of beginnings. Say the breath of beginnings. One more time. Breath the breath of, of beginnings. beginnings. It's the word that describes a baby's first breath. You know, slap them on the honey. That's the first breath. That's what happened in the upper room. I'd never heard it said like that before. It was like a rebirth. Amen? And he said, it's the word that describes a baby's first breath. That's what happened in the upper room. The Holy Spirit came with tornado force winds coming from heaven. And he, and, and the 120, breathed, and then he breathed into them the breath of life. So even though there's tornado force winds, he breathed, like, just like when um, God said he breathed the breath of life into Adam. That's what happened to the 120. It was a new, a fresh beginning, a new start. He breathed into the breath of life. And I never heard that before. And then he jumped down to Acts chapter 2 in the last chapter. And he said, in, in, all right, so it filled the whole house in which they were sitting, verse 3. And there appeared unto them tongues resembling fire, which were separated and distributed and which settled on each one of them. So he, and he's right. You're in this community. They didn't have cell phones. I mean, he didn't say it that way, but I got the gist of what he was saying. You didn't have cell phones, but whatever. Everybody saw this tornado force when they see it rest. It's not destroying the building. There's Then when they see the people, they're seeing tons of fire. Quite, you know, that's why so many people gathered. I never thought about it because, you know, why did they all, I mean, tons, he, Peter preached to 3,000, and they usually only count the men, so who knows how many people were actually there. But if you noticed a tornado, you saw it's operating. In, in fact, we've been in meetings back in the early 1990s to mid-1990s down at Carpenter's Home Church, which is no longer there, but the fire pe trucks came because people kept calling and reporting. They, liter they saw literal fire over on the top of the church. It was, a whole, it was a Holy Spirit experience. They actually saw 
And when they got there, they realized nothing was on fire, but it was, they saw a fire, it wasn't burning, just like Moses in the bush. I mean, it, the bush kept burning, but the bush wasn't consumed. Well, the building, thank God, wasn't consumed in the natural, or I wouldn't be here, because I was there. <laughs> anyway, I'm not done yet. I've got, a, I've got my assignments to fulfill, and so do you. If you're breathing, if you're not breathing, you're gonna... Why are you listening? No. So the tongues resembling fire, which appeared separated and distributed and settled on each one of them. And they were all filled, diffused throughout the, their souls with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in different foreign languages or in tongues as the Spirit kept giving them clear and bold expression in each tongue in inappropriate words. And verse 19, and we're going to jump down to 19, Acts chapter 3, I'm sorry, Acts chapter 3, verse 19. So all these people had gathered, right? And Peter, he, the, the guy that was um, lame at the what, gate, beautiful over there by the synagogue, it was by that gate, and he'd been there since he was born, he'd been crippled since he was born, and he was saying, you know, alms, alms, can he have the permit? They gave permits, they had different clothing and stuff for blind people to, to ask for money, so people knew they weren't getting scammed. I could go on that ramp, well, anyway. But the, so that you know they truly were in need. And he was allowed to do that. He had permission. And Peter said, silver or gold have I none, but what I have, such as I have, I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ, come and stand up and walk. So there was all that taking place. Fire, the holy thing, all this stuff going on. So Peter was smart enough to take advantage of the situation. He had, so that's why there was such a large crowd. So it says, Peter was... He, in verse 19, so Peter said, So repent, change your mind and purpose, turn around and return to God, that your sins may be erased, blotted out, wiped out, that times of refreshing, of recovering from the effects of heat, of reviving with fresh air, may come from the presence of the Lord. You need to be refreshed. You need to get in the presence of the Lord. Another thing God's been speaking to me all week is, and I, I, I don't, I don't really care where you go and personally, but I'm telling you, this is not the time to be in a nominal conformative church. One that doesn't believe that the Bible is the infallible word of God. One that just thinks they're just stories. Or, and, and obviously I'm going to say this. If they're one of those that are opening up so that you can get the jab in the church, get out of there. This is not the time to play church. This is not the time to be lukewarm. This is the time to be hot on fire for God. It, uh, it's necessary. It's actually, what are they, what, what were they saying? Churches weren't, um, essential. it's essential. I'm going to use the word in the right way. It's essential to be where the presence of God is permeating and filling the place and God's being allowed to be God. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen. So that times of refreshing of recovering from the effects of heat of reviving with fresh air may come from the presence of the Lord. So what he said there is refreshing is also one of those words that has the breath of God in it. It means the blowing of the breath or wind of God intensely. I'm going to say it again. So the times of refreshing, what that means is times of the blowing of the breath or wind of God intensely. So both places are speaking of God himself blowing, breathing into you the breath of life, the presence of God. My husband's reminding me, we did a service in Maryland. Um, where were we? Camp Springs? Yeah. Camp Springs, Maryland. We were on the platform doing praise and worship, and a literal, I mean, we both, it was so wild, felt this wind come over, and, and then we were holding on, because it was like a six-foot platform, yeah. or better, and, and we didn't want to fall. And I don't know how many people were there, probably about hundreds, yeah, 300 people, Two or three hundred people, and and so they were there, and all of a sudden, while we're feeling that, we didn't touch one person. Everybody was down, and I I remember this specifically: a little five-year-old girl, because um, missionettes and Royal Rangers had already ended, so the kids had come in because the service was going longer, as revival meetings do, and she got a big old six-foot heavy-set man fell on her. I don't know, I just saw it, and I'm like, oh God, please be with that little girl. And she was fine, so, so fine. She didn't get hurt. That's supernatural. You can't. She wanted to be prayed for. Again, when we did the prayer line, she came in line because she was so hungry for God. I remember, yeah, I want to share this too because he's telling me too. We were in another church. It was in Maryland too. It was a different church. 
And this little girl drew a picture while Pastor Eddie and I were on the platform singing. And, and her mom said, I just wanted to show it what she drew. She said she saw this light emanating. And she drew it with our faces holding the microphone, um, Pastor Eddie at the keyboard. But she saw light because kids see. And we, I want to, you know, the Holy Spirit's wanting me to remind you, moms, dads, grandma, grandpas, don't squelch that. So many children were meant to be seers but have been told, you know, just nonsense or whatever, and they and they miss what, what they've been called to do or have, it takes a long time to get them back there. Encourage them, you know, if they see things in the spirit because they're actually seeing better than we are. What is happening in what you, you see me on this camera and we see each other in this room, that's nothing in comparison to what's really going on. <laughs> the angels that are here right now, the, the great cloud of witnesses that's with us, and we need, I'm saying to me too, just remember, when I'm saying these things, I'm, I'm speaking by the Spirit. I need to listen too. We need to be recognizing that that's always with us. We carry all, all of heaven backs you and me up. And it may not, and I love, you know, I was watching Kenneth Copeland, and he, he pulled out that old song from Charles Capps. His word is working mightily in me. Y'all know that one? His word is working mightily in me. No matter what the circumstances, what I feel or see, God's word is working mightily in me. So it doesn't matter what your body tells you. It doesn't matter what your checkbook tells you. It doesn't matter what your mind going, you know, ah! God's word is working mightily in you. And you need to start, because he, he was saying, I have, I've done that before. So I've been singing that a lot. God's word is working mightily in me. God's word is working mightily in you. And he would work even more mightily through us if we were paying attention. I don't know how many times my angels have probably had their arms crossed. Because I'm not giving them anything to do. Or I've said stuff to tie them up. And I've used this example before. If your things are going out badly at, at your place of employment and they're about to lay people off, the last thing you need to come out of your mouth, I'll probably be the first person that gets laid off. And your angels are going, great. Instead, you should say, I will not get laid off. In fact, I'm going to get a promotion. And your angels will go to work on your behalf. That's the truth. And I, I think I've neglected to speak about angels many times because we're not supposed to worship angels. They're, are, they're here, uh, I think it's Hebrews chapter 1, to assist those who are heirs of salvation, which means if you're born again, they're here to help you get your job done. And sometimes they appear as a person. Sometimes you're entertaining an angel unaware. You're not even aware that that's what's happening. I remember that happening to us. We were at Disney World. Eric was three. Yeah. Jennifer was five. And I can't, I used to be able to outride everyone until I had a baby. Something literally happened hormonally. I could not, if it went round and round, uh, I'm going to bark. And so I don't do that. Or I feel like I have to and not bark, which is even worse, right? I'm sorry if that's gross to you, but whatever, it's the truth. And so they went on, what was that thing, the teacups? Mm -hmm. Where it goes round and round, and then you're going round and round and round. And so he took the two children, because they wanted to go, but when Eric heard the brakes, and they stopped, because they were in line to get on, and it makes, ah, you know, he got scared, and he said, go to mom. Well, I didn't know, and I couldn't see them. No, what I said. Oh. I set him over. He over set him over the? Chain. Here. I put him over the chain and said, stay right there while I grab your sister. Should have put the older one over first because she would have She would have listened. And he he took off. He thought he knew where mom was and she was not where he thought. So my first record. So I ask you. Yeah, so Eric? my husband comes with Jennifer and he says, where's Eric? And I'm like, with you? Hello? And he said, no. And I had already heard all kinds of stories about kids being abducted from there remember to look for their shoes because they generally don't have time to change the shoes, but even they'll even change like a hat or something, cover up their hair color. Hair. We had just heard a bunch, bunch of that stuff and my heart sank to my feet. And I'm like, oh my God, what just happened? And I, I remember feeling hysterical, but I've got, I had to pull myself together. So I said, well, you go one way, we'll meet back here, I'll go that way. So I went towards Tomorrowland. I'm like looking frantically and of course it's in summer, Bumper to bumper people. I mean, it's kind of like, who touched me? <laughs> it's like, Jesus, who touched me? Like, really, Jesus? You've got this group of people. So I, I'm like looking for a needle in a haystack. This beautiful blonde lady 
in a, a, a uniform that had from the park with this little blue cap and stuff, just a, really pretty. And she came up to me and she said, ma'am, did you, are you missing someone? And I said, yeah, my son. And what does he look like? And she said, just stay here a minute. I said, okay. And she brought him to me. I hugged him. When I looked up, I could not, I looked everywhere. She was gone. Now I was entertaining an angel unaware. And I'm so thank you. Thank you. So you're, you've sometimes you've had angels help you. You don't even know it. Other times you're going to see them and they look eight feet tall and whatever. And you're going to go, uh, and that's why they say fear not. <laughs> so anyway, I don't know how I got on that. So times of refreshing the blowing of the breath of the wind of God intensely. So what happened in the upper room wasn't just meant for them. It's, it was meant for you and me. And we need, I heard the Holy Spirit say this, many of us, we need a fresh infilling. We need a fresh wind of God to breathe into us the life of God. How cool is that? That we get an experience like Adam, that God himself breathes his life into us. That's what this means. And I've never connected those dots before. That's, and I knew I was supposed to share it with our group. God wants to breathe into you fresh life from him directly into you and breathing life into you. So that's what he's saying to us as well. Acts 3 verses 20 through 21 said, And that he may send to you the Christ, the Messiah, who before was designated and appointed for you, even Jesus, whom the heavens must receive and retain until the time for the complete restoration of all that God spoke by the mouth of all of his holy prophets for ages past from most ancient times in the memory of man. So what, what Dutch chief started, said he read all these scriptures and then he said, times, it, it actually, um, some, I think some of the translation only said time or refreshing. It's actually plural. And if you go back and study it, it's times plural of restoration of all things. We are in seasons of restoration of or the reconstituting. It's a good word, he said. And that means the reconstituting, changing things back to the way it's supposed to be, the way it was written, the way it was designed. So we are in season after season after season where God is reconstituting things. And I've got it in caps because he must have emphasized it. He does it through the blowing of his wind. That's how he, re he brings it back to the original, what it needed to be. He does it through the, blow um, the blowing of his wind. We go from glory to glory. We go from faith to faith, strength to strength, revival to revival, awakening to awakening, reformation to reformation, reconstituting to reconstituting. And we are about to move into a season of reconstituting. This is so good. And transformation, that was the word he used, reformation or reformation and it won't come until the awakening comes i don't think that god told us to name it transformation church i think we have just entered our season i'm serious and i don't care i don't have, care what the numbers are we have just entered our season things are about to move rapidly we're going to begin to see suddenly now i'm speaking to the group here and you can come be a part anytime you want or watch us but god is causing transformation to be in the season of transformation that's our calling in Jesus' name. So when the revival comes and the conscience of the people is awakened, which is happening, some of us are seeing it. We were talking today at breakfast how that some, you know, you don't have a mask on and someone's like, fear, fear, fear. Um, but people are starting to be awakened right now. In fact, I heard, ah, who was I listening to? Last night someone said, oh, it was Johnny Enloe and it was from Friday, but I watched it last night. And this thing he said was that the number one Christian, the number one album right now, not to, the number one album is Sean Fo Foyt's new um, Christian music. That's the, huh? He's a, he's a worshiper. Um, so Sean Foyt, I thought that was really cool. That's the number one album right now. The number one song, single, it's number one and then it's also number four for some reason, is uh, Let's Go Brandon. All right, even though that has a crude meaning and some of you know what Let's Go Brandon means, it's a sign that the young people have had enough, that they're waking up, and that's the season we're entering into, and we, you and I need to be ready to disciple them. Mm -hmm. It's not enough just to get them born again. We have to disciple all nations. That's part of what we're supposed to do. And and I thank you, that Lord, that we're going to get to disciple all nations. Amen? Amen? So when the revival comes and the conscience 
of people is awakened, they begin to respond to God. They want to know what he thinks. They want to know what he says. They want to know what the word says. Something comes alive to them. It's written in their heart. So, it, you know, the word of God is written in all of our hearts, but you're blinded. It's, you know, he puts darkness, Satan brings darkness, and that darkness has to be removed before they can receive. So you can say, hey, you know, the Bible says, what does that matter to them? Bible, Bible smile to them. But that's what's going to change. <laughs> I love it. Ooh. I know, I, I would have played his clip, but I didn't want to get in trouble. I, can't, I, just, I certainly can reiterate what he said. So they want to know what he says. They want to know what the word says. Something comes alive in them. It's written in their heart. When they hear it in the Bible, something awakens it inside them because his word is written in them. Right now, they don't care what God thinks, but they will care what God thinks. Half of the evangelical church, and he said this, and this is the truth, half of the evangelical church now doesn't even believe the Bible is the literal, infallible word of God. And we have, I could go on, my husband did a whole series on that when we pastored a church in Texas, that they should have known better. But then they will, they will begin to believe and know that God is God, and his word is infallible, and the Bible is the truth. So most of them right now think the Bible is a history book, it suggests things. Yeah, you can take, you know, you can take it or leave it. How many of you know the truth does not change? Truth is not relative. Truth is absolute. Mm -hmm. So we have a humanistic culture right now. We have a humanistic culture that truth is relative. Depends on the circumstances. They've been doing that for years. I remember that in high school. I don't know. It's been going on for a long time. They are seculars. They believe that God and spiritual things should be kept separate from government and life in general. Excuse me. It's for a limited time on a Sunday morning. Keep it in the church. They want to, in, and then there's those, I'm going to add this, I want to just squash the church. That's what secular, secularism says. So that's what they believe. But God will awaken the spirit, bring it to life, fill it with his spirit, and suddenly, woohoo! This is going to be the biggest game changer because it allows us to reform, transform, and reconstitute a nation and change laws. Because we won't be changing it on paper. I've said this for years, so those who know me, you can change all the laws in the world, but until our hearts change, it really isn't going to matter. I don't care what you pass. They had the prohibition, you know, no alcohol. Well, people found a way to go underground and have their alcohol. It has to be a heart change. Amen? They're going to change their spirits. And what, then when an issue comes up in society where people want to debate and talk about it, more people than not are going to be wondering, hey, what does God think about it? I wonder what the Bible says. And they become hungry for the word. The word that would have bored them the day before. That's how much they're going to change and how suddenly. I found myself, he said, reading for hours a day when he, got, he gave his heart back to God. Reading hours a day, weeping over it, underlining it, writing in my Bible. Something came alive in me. Well, that's about to happen. It's going to be a game changer. So that was his word. That is about to happen right now. Well, the Lord had already spoken to me, and I had my notes, but I put this verse to, um, to turn to Ezekiel chapter 37. Ezekiel chapter 37, verse 1, and I'm going to tie together what he had been saying to me anyway. All right. Ezekiel chapter 37, and I'm using the Amplified Classic Edition, verse 1. The hand of the Lord was upon me. Oh, help. I can't turn the page. The hand of the Lord was upon me, and he brought me out in the spirit of the Lord, and he sat me down in the midst of the valley, and it was full of bones. I wanted, and I should have done it. I was out, and I didn't think about it. I should have gotten a little skeleton to show you, and I could have hung it here. I ain't got nobody. You know, just, especially at Halloween time, I would have found easy time to find a skeleton, but you probably had one in your classroom. I, no? Oh, that's, that's science. Yes, yeah, wrong, wrong thing. Anyway, and the Lord <laughs> and sat me down in the midst of a valley. It was full of bones. And when he chased me to pass round about them, or when he caused me, sorry, to pass round about them, and behold, there were very many human bones in the open valley or plain, and behold, they were very dry. And he said to me, Son of man, can these bones live? I love his answer because he didn't want to get in trouble with God, and we all, I always laugh when I read this. Oh, Lord God, you alone know. <laughs> you know. Tell me the answer. <laughs> you must think they can. I don't think they can. Anyway, verse 4. Again, he said to me, prophesy to these bones and say to them, Oh, you dry bones, 
hear the word of the Lord. And he said, the Lord of God, uh, thus said the Lord God to these bones, behold, I will cause breath and spirit. So I knew what God's been trying to tell me all week. I will cause breath and spirit to enter you and you will live. That's exactly what's about to happen. And so I'm, see, I'm getting worst again. I've been, I probably, whew. thank you, Lord. If I talk about it, I won't be able to speak anymore. Whew. Whoa. So we're walking among a lot of dry bones right now. And just like his prophecy said and his word said, it's like the valley of dry bones. And we're looking around and, and God's saying, Gary, Pastor Gary, Pastor Amy, Pastor Eddie, can these bones live? Oh, Lord, you know. I'm not kidding. I'm not stepping in that. I'm not stepping in Okay, and again, he said to me, prophesy to these bones and say to them. That means we have to speak. And this is the second part of what I'm saying. And it, this isn't going to be much longer. So you'll all be thankful. Because once, when, once the word said, we don't need to, to go anywhere else with it. But what he was telling me is you and I have been given the privilege of being here for such a time as this. You and I are not here by accident. You and I are not called Transformation Church for no reason. There is a reason. And we're transformers. We're to transform the people that have been walking in wickedness and darkness, and, and they're going to see a great light emanating from us. I even saw one point when I looked up on praise and worship, I saw Pastor Gary sitting over here, and then I saw this great light emanating. Um, the Holy Spirit just reminded me of that, just coming out there. And so that, but that, see, I was seeing in the Spirit. All of that's hap that's you, that's you, that's you, it's us. That we have this great light that's, we, when we walk in a room, we change the atmosphere. If we recognize we have that ability, but mm -hmm. you can change the atmosphere, you can change that, that boardroom, you can change that restaurant, whatever it is, you, wherever you are, we walk in a place and it changes. We take the atmosphere with us when we, and we, I, I think it's great to make, to make note of the minute you walk out the door, maybe you need to do it in your home, but the minute you walk out the door, say, Lord, give me eyes to see, ears to hear. Show me what, you know, let me be aware of you, Holy Spirit, in every part of my day. So that you, he can nudge you and say, hey, say something to that person or do this, do that, and you will obey. So he said, prophesy to these bones, and we have to speak. O oh, bones, hear the word of the Lord. And you and I need to prophesy to the bones. This great awakening, the Lord had already moved in my heart. I'm going to go back and find it and type up that, that, that prophecy, but that, that it's already here. It's already begun. And just like I said, with the songs on the chart, now that was Friday. I don't know if it's changed since then, if anyone wants to critique it. That was the 29th of October. But the top song single is Let's Go Brandon. Now, as crude as that is, that is an awesome sign. It's an awesome, yeah. yeah. It means our young people have had enough. And be, these are the same young people that said, oh, we don't. Trump's just mean. We need, we, need, we need to change. We need this guy. It was more of a vote, like you've said, you know, against Trump than it was for Biden. And bottom line is they realized that they were, they're, they're beginning to see the truth and hear the truth, and they're ripe for picking right now. So we need to begin to speak. The power of life and death is in your and my tongue. Actually, it's in everyone's tongue, whether you're born again or not. If you speak death or life over your, but we have, those of us who are saved, um, and ah, I see Miss Evelyn, love you, we miss you. He said, prophesy to these bones and say to them, Oh, you dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, Behold, I will cause breath and spirit to enter you, and you will live. You're going to minister. I believe that in the spirit I'm even seeing that these meetings are going to take place where we're going to lay hands on them. We're going to prophesy, and the spirit of God is going to enter them. They will be reborn, not just born again to go to heaven, but reborn with the fire and the Holy Ghost, with the Bible evidence of speaking in tongues, that this is going to be a mighty army. They're not going to be nominal. They're not going to be relevant to this world. They're going to be the leaders. We're, the gates of hell will not prevail against you and I and them, and we're going to begin to see that their lives be transformed. You were brought here. I'm telling you, this is pro prophetic. You and I were brought here for such a time as this. This is our time. This is our season. If we've never had seen anything like what's going to happen, I hear this. We have not seen anything like this before 
So don't, so we got to let God out of the box. We have to open all the valves of the Holy Ghost. We've got to allow the Holy Ghost to be the Holy Ghost and do what he wants to do. We cannot be ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. We cannot be ashamed of speaking in tongues. We cannot be ashamed of the, the movement of the, because uh, when, sometimes when he does things, I mean, I like, I can look and laugh or whatever, but I, I even told the Holy Spirit when some of these meetings, I'd rather not do that. <laughs> it's good for them, but please, not me. <laughs> But you know what? Use me. Do whatever you have to do. Whatever it takes to see a soul that was going to hell and coming to heaven. And more realistically, I don't just want them to see have an escape into heaven. I want them to be on fire, discipled, men and women of God. I think what is the greatest days to be alive right now in Jesus' name. Okay, and then, so he prophesied, Behold, I will cause breath and spirit to enter you, and you shall live. So I see as we minister... Those of us, I mean, the ones of us here in this room, Ms. Evelyn, as we minister to these people, we're going to see the breath of God enter them just like it did Adam and Eve when he breathed on them and brought life into them. It's directly the breath of God reviving and, and bringing them to life. And it says in verse 6, And I will lay sinews upon you and bring up flesh upon you and cover you with skin. I will put breath, again, I will put breath and spirit in you, and you, dry bones, shall live. And you shall know, understand, and realize that I am the Lord. I am the sovereign ruler who calls forth loyalty and obedient service. Uh, you know, I, what was that thing they used to say for Royal Rangers? I will obey. Ready, ready for anything. Yeah. Okay. Huh. Ready, ready for anything. Ready to work, play, serve, obey, worship, live, etc. Sir. Sir. The Lord. <laughs> amen. I just say amen to that. I don't. I, I learned the stars and the, the missionette program but i i like what they did what they did we need to be ready to serve obey do whatever he tells you to do and i have to tell you this there have been things god asked me to do that i thought you hate me god i'm serious i after hearing lindsey roberts give that testimony a couple weeks ago and she said she, she would be on set and they would keep a bucket for her to throw up in because the minute they went to a commercial or whatever that's how she could not but she did it anyway Sometimes we need to do things afraid, do what we're uncomfortable, get out of our comfort zone and do whatever God tells you to do. Well, I can tell you from experience that when I gave into it and did, even though I did it crying, I'm thinking, God, I did. I thought, God, you just hate me. You, you could have asked me to do anything and you're asking me to do this. Really? I mean, and I was not very, but I was obedient. I, I did it anyway. Turns out that every time that happens, it was the greatest joy of my life, and I would have missed out on something that was in my heart I didn't even know was there, on um, something that made me feel more fulfilled and had more passion about than I ever, I thought, are you kidding me? I'm serious. I hope that the heart of this gets across because you, you may thought, think, again, like, really? You want me to do, that's just not in my wheelhouse, and I really thought it wasn't, and it turned out some of the greatest testimonies have come out of that, of my obedience. So I'm just telling you now, just say yes. Just say yes and do it. Because you're going to miss out on your greatest, most awesome days and, and results. I mean, the results of my obedience is amazing. Verse 7, so I prophesied as I was commanded, and I prophesied that there was, there was a thundering noise, and behold, a shaking and a trembling and a rattling, and the bone came together, bone to bone. Does that sound like the upper room? A shaking and a rattling. Fire is coming. Tornado, woo, winds. I mean, here in Florida, hurricane winds. Have you ever been out in hurricane force winds? All that's taken place. And I looked and behold, there were sinews upon the bones and flesh came upon them and, and skin covered over them, but there was no breath or spirit in them. Then, as he, then said he to me, and I say to you that are watching, those that are here, prophesy to the breath and spirit, son of man, woman of man, I'm going to say whatever. Prophesy to the spirit and breath, son of man, and say to the breath and spirit, thus says the Lord. And this is a word for us. Come now from the four winds, O breath and spirit. Breathe upon these slain that they may live. We need to prophesy the breath of the Holy Spirit into the people that we start working with and that we are meeting. Begin to prophesy breath, the spirit of breath to come into them. So I prophesied as he commanded. And the breath and spirit came into the bones, and they lived and stood upon their feet, an exceedingly great host. We, you and I, are privileged. I'm telling you, the four right here in this room, 
We are the ones that have been called to be enforcers of the will of God and what he wants to do, to be people that are transformers, that are causing people to have the breath, that we are to prophesy the breath of God, that there is more power in you than you can even think or imagine. It is exceedingly abundantly above all we can think or imagine that you are a powerhouse for the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. You are not nominal. You're not less than. He, it, he's not, he, he has no favorites. The only difference is going to be is how much you allow him to open up and, and use you. That's really the only big difference. Because we're just the flesh. We're the conduits. That's, and see, to me, that's liberating. I don't have to be all that. All I have to do is say, yes, sir. All I have to do is say yes and obey and do what he tells me to do. And the results aren't my problem. Fire hose for Jesus. Fire hose for Jesus. <laughs> I, it's funny that Pastor Gary said that because one. Oh, it's been about two months now. We were watching something, and I was just praying in the spirit while I was watching it, and I can't even tell you what it was. And I usually do something like that. I watch something like that before I go to bed so that I can sleep. Usually, usually the anointed stuff. I don't even hear what they say. I fall asleep in the chair and then I go to bed. True. Been doing that for years. So all of a sudden, my right hand starts to burn, and I have an open-eyed vision in my. And I, I have you no. Know, if you've got a fireplace, they have those um, pokers. pokers. And God's showing me that, and he also showed me this crown, which I drew because it's not one I would normally draw. And it had this one big um, gem. I don't know what it was, but whatever it was, light was emanating all out, out from it. Superwoman or <laughs> Wonder Woman, here we go. Here. But that kind of thing. And so the light was emanating, that he had crowned me with that to do that. But he's, he basically said, um, you're a fire poker, because he said it me earlier, you know, you're the spark that gets the fire going. Well, I've moved, I'm, I've upgraded. I'm now the fire poker that when I poke that fire, because I looked it up, that's to get the fire burning again. That's to kind of get yeah. air in there so that it starts whooshing again. So that's my new assignment. Reigniter. A reigniter. <laughs> okay, I'll call it that. And so that's my new assignment. Why he showed me that? Well, I'm just saying, okay, yes, sir. So I will look for places and I'll believe that God caused to reignite the fire in people or to get that burning. And they've already got embers burning. They just need something to prod them and, and poke them, I guess. Poke. <laughs> uh, anyway, and you can't make this stuff up because, again, I I would rather see myself as mighty warrior, dressed for battle, fire, uh, you know, a, a sword with fire burning from it, you know. Anyway, <laughs> that wasn't what I saw. A fire poker. So I prophesied that he's commanded, breath and spirit came into the bones, and they lived and stood up on their feet, an exceeding great host. Verse 12, then he said to me, son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. 11, excuse me. Behold, they say, our bones are dried up and our hope is lost. We cannot say that. Be, there's power. Death, of, death and life are in the power of our tongue, and we will eat the fruit of what we say. So we can't look around going, I just see dead bones, and I don't see anything happening, or... Um, you might see sinew, that would kind of be gross, but sinew on their flesh, uh, you know, starting to grow on it, but whatever. Don't say, behold, I will, you know, our bones are dried up, our hope is gone. I just heard the Holy Spirit say, okay, it's a little detour. Some of you are looking at your careers, your families, maybe your husband or wife walked out, spouse walked out on you, and, and they remarried somebody else, and you're like, it's over. We lost the job, and all these things happen, and it's over, but not to God. And I'm not saying he's going to cause them to leave the person they're married to, but God's got a hope and a future. And so he has a better person for you. Honest. God does that. Mm -hmm. My daughter right now, well, be careful what I say. Is it okay, Holy Spirit? Okay, I'm going to be careful. But there, I know people, including my daughter, who God took a horrible situation and turned it into the biggest blessing ever. How many know that? You're one. Okay. I know we have one here. I mean, God, when he does it, you can't even imagine how wonderful it's going to be in comparison to what troubles and heartache that you walk through. So don't think it's too late. Don't think that it's dead bones. There's no hope. It's over with. It is not over with. It's just the beginning if you'll grab a hold of this message. Amen? Amen. God's telling you that. I'm just, the, I'm just the vessel he's using. Amen. Therefore, prophesy and say to them, those dead bones, and thus says the Lord. So you see, prophesy, prophesy. We need to speak life. 
That's our job in this thing, to receive what God's saying to us, to be who God's telling us to be, and to speak what he tells us to speak. Therefore prophesy and say to them, thus says the Lord, behold, I will open your graves and cause you to come out of your graves. O oh, my people, I will bring you back home to the land of Israel, and you will know that I am the Lord, your sovereign ruler, when I have opened your graves and caused you to come out of, up out of your graves, O oh, my people. And verse um, I don't my glasses on. 14. 14, thank you. And I shall put my spirit in you and you will live. He's going to breathe life into those situations again. So not only into you, but into that marriage situation, into that prodigal child situation, into that family situation, into that business situation, into the, you know, spirit, spiritually, physically, mentally, financially, transformation, healing, spiritually, physically, mentally, and financially, whatever area that's in, and that will consume your that also brings in the relationships and all of the things. He can breathe life where there was death. And you need to let him do it. I will put my spirit in you and you will live. And I shall place you in your own land. And then you shall know and understand and realize that I, the Lord, have spoken and performed it, says the Lord. What's about to happen in our, the United States of America is that whatever God does, the only person that's going to get the glory is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Amen. Trump will not get the, President Trump will not get the glory. The army won't get the glory. The Justice Department, Supreme Court won't get the glory. Somehow God's going to do this in a way that our King of Kings and our Lord of Lords gets all the glory. Yes. In fact, I heard someone say that well, there was a six-day war in Israel. Yes. That there are accounts that they didn't, what was it? In the 60s. In the 60s, okay. 68 or 69. They didn't obviously make the news or whatever, but there are, are transcripts and stuff where there it was God. And that it, totally God that it happened that they won in the Six-Day War. There were actually angels that were seen that were doing battle, just like what we read in the Bible, that that kind of thing happened. I will not be surprised. I'm not saying does save the Lord, but I, don't, I will not be surprised if that's part of what's already happening. I think there are people already being removed. I think there are people already being dealt with and that God's on the move and he will get all the glory. We And I want to say this to you. If you take a hold of this, go back and listen to it again. I'm going to listen to it because I'm hearing the Holy Spirit download some things to me. That, that And I, oh, when I edit, I have to listen to it anyway. Go back and listen to this. Get a hold of it. Do, don't let it just be a message. Allow God to speak to you and how he's going to use you in this end time to transform, to bring reformation, to bring the great awakening, because they are going to see the truth, and it's going to set them free, and he needs you and I to get there. We're here. We're the ones that are to mentor them, to disciple them, to, to show them, you know, a better way, and encourage them to have all the fire of God that, that you know, that they might put us to shame in their fire and their zeal. Go for it. Go try, try to do that. That would be wonderful. But just find out what God's telling you to do and do it. Don't just let it be words and empty, you know, just, okay, that was nice. <laughs> Amen? Amen? Because when you start walking, this is what the Holy Spirit's saying, when you start walking in all of that, don't take the glory. He's, he's constantly reminding me that he will get all the glory. Um, the word that we had back in 1980-something, when we first had our first church plant, we, 88, 1988, our church first plant and our, our, what was called the, what are they called? I've changed Super, yeah. the superintendent of this whole state of Florida and part of Puerto Rico and all that came to speak and they did what they called the setting and order, order service and setting us up as a, the real deal or whatever. I don't know what you want to call it. Anyway, he had a word of prophecy and he said, you're going to look around and you're going to say, where did all these people come from? And I'm answering him in my head and I'm like, the Lord did it. I mean, if you're doing your first plant, you, had no, you absolutely would have no question. That would have to be God. And he said, but they're going to press you now. How did you gather these people? A, B, C, D. You know, and it would be, my personality would be to give you that, just because I'm a, a shaper. So I would shape it, A, B, C, one, two, three. He said, but you never do that. You just say, God did it. Don't ever give in to that because it's not a formula. It might look like one to them. And they're going to say, if you did this, this, and this, but it's not that you give God all the glory. And he said, you're going to be gathering just like uh, um, David. David at Ziklag, I believe it was, all the, those that were in debt, downtrodden, there were a bunch of D's that he used, despairing or whatever. 
and then God's going to, you're going to bring discouraged. <laughs> My husband's reminding me of the words. And he's going to create a great army out of them. And again, to God be the glory. Great things he has done, and we need to give him the glory. Mm -hmm. So, Father, I give you the glory today for this message. I thank you, Father, for the changes it's going to make. Father, in the spirit realm, I take my right hand. There's a poker in it, and I poke, poke, poke. That The fire just starts to burn and blaze like never before. Now I know why you keep saying blaze to me. That, Lord, that a blaze comes, Father, that we will become so stoked with the embers of it and burning, 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 Father, that, that light would emanate from us, that we would be transformers, those that transform people from darkness into your glorious light to disciple them and to be all that you'd have us to be. Father, I ask right now, Father, if there's any reason that I need it and anyone that's watching us and, and here today that need it, Father, I ask for a fresh breath of the Holy Spirit to come into me, breathe new life into me, Breathe new life into those that want to receive new life. Breathe that life of the Holy Spirit. Fresh, fresh fire from heaven. Fresh restoration, re reformation, transformation, Father. We receive it by faith in Jesus' name. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Well, thank you for tuning in. I'm Pastor Becky. If I probably didn't even tell you that. Sorry. <laughs> this is transformationchurch.com. You'll see it there. If you'd like to give, give. Um, thumbs up, press the bell, all of that. Subscribe, and we love you. And come, to, uh, most of all, come see us. Amen. Amen. Hey. Are we good? Okay. Love you. Bye bye. Bye, Miss Evelyn.